for their aggression in the with his aggression in the early game and blank is there for the adaptation so we're already ready to get started and the crowd is ready to get started too you can see all the signs in the audience the support for edg they really want to bring home a win for that crowd here but they'll have to get through skt to do it let's see how they go about constructing this draft galio and rise banned out by edward gaming sk telecom t1 going to respond with Callista and sejuani being removed from the pool and we're seeing this uh, rise in the mid lane become an s tier champion here at the world's championship uh, so many teams are picking him up taking him early as well and of course we've seen good uh, uses of his ulti and there's good rises and there's fakers rise this guy has an skt world skin for rise very famous rise but has only lost i believe four times in his career among his most played so no surprise the ban comes through from edg and once again we see the zaya priority very high zaya first picked on the side of edward gaming as the gragas and the shen are the last couple of bands this time around now it's up to skt let's see how they start their draft off very interesting to see such a high priority a, a first round ban onto shen we saw shen yesterday from mouse it was actually ahq that talked about the fact that shen they felt like that was shutting down a lot of their counterplay so they're respecting it even though when i was watching the shen i was really feeling like they weren't getting the maximum value yesterday edg out of the shen's global presence skt getting maximum value out of their first rotation though stealing away rakan from edg and then getting that job and pick with c so so often they can still go for tristana if they want to be as the ad carry and be more than fine down in this bottom lane here. I love to see though when teams are playing against like these Rakans without Zaya, actually go for like counter picks to the Rakan specifically. We look at things like Morgana can be one of them, Braum, Alistar, Thresh, like some of these champions that can shut down the Rakan very hard. Not in this game though, because you know, Janna Lulu art sensor is a thing. So it yep. becomes just a, the safe Janna choice. Well, the Janna picked up, that means the bottom lane is finalized there for EDG. Zaya plus Janna. Then you've got the Rek'Sai in the jungle. Meanwhile, SKT, they're going with Jarvan most likely in the jungle and the Rakan Twitch bottom lane. And that's also where the Janna gets more value against Jarvan specifically. We saw it in the last game with C9. Like, you are this Jarvan here, you want to EQ combo into a fight, instantly you get ulti by the Janna, you're out of it, and you're actually not adding a lot of value there. And I think the Twitch is a nice pick here. It's not a big one for Bang. Prey certainly a famous Twitch player, but Bang in and out in terms of his champion pool. I like it because you see Rek'Sai and you're like, well, backline threat is not there in the first three picks. You're feeling very safe to lock in Twitch. Pass through damage will be a thing. Whatever is locked in for the next two picks for EDG. So Twitch has been situational so far at Worlds, but I think it's going to keep rising in priority. And as expected by what you've seen so far in the first part of the picking, the banning in the second part will reply in kind as the top laners are being banned out by SKT. Renekton and Trundle taken off the board while EDG removes LeBlanc. It smells like Cho'Gath are suddenly coming in for Huni and then they can last pick mid for Faker again. Scout to make sure they have basically lanes or solo lanes that can handle themselves. They don't actually necessarily need a lot of help in case you want to play around this bottom side where your Twitch is already sitting. So with the Trundle ban, which is one of those Cho'Gath counters, we can see what sadly I've not seen action so far in nope. this tournament, but obviously uh, Huni loves to play this champion in the top lane. And there's different weeds that people will have. Other teams that play around their top lane that don't have Faker in the mid lane might lock in mid here to potentially flex the Jarvan, but SKT does not play top lane Jarvan with any regularity, so they're happy to go Trugath, one of the dominant picks we've had so far at Worlds, and now Scout has to blind pick for mid lane. And we also need some magic damage from EDG, so Lucian should not be an option for Scout, even though he loves to take that champion. Corky is available Syndra. for him to pick. Syndra is also there. LeBlanc is banned away, so he can't go back to that one, and he's actually going to Lucian. Okay, fair enough, you swap into Rumble. I'm just gonna say very quickly, I do not like this. You're gonna get so damn outscaled, it's gonna yep. hurt EDG. And they showed yesterday they could not close the game in time, and now they're opting into a snowball comp. When your number one tank is a Rek'Sai, your comp might have some difficulties in the current state of the game, but that is what EDG has opted into. What do they want to play against the Lucian? They banned away LeBlanc and Cassio. We see it often. Will it just be a farm lane? And a farm lane that can go certainly awry. If you checked in at MSI, you'll remember that Faker had struggles in this match. He's played it subsequently. He's been just fine. They're going for Orion. They're going for scaling. And I see you rub your hands ah. together, Ficatio, <laughs> because there's a certain time reader around 25 to 30 minutes where you only look at SK Telecom. And I'm looking straight at Clear Love on this Rex side. Now, Rex side, good early clear, can gank in the early game. Clearlop is a player who's not been performing at Worlds. This is the game for him to prove every single hater wrong 
because Heat needs to be so active in the early game, shutting down multiple lanes on the side of SKT in order for EDG to get a big enough lead. I mean, it probably has to go Warrior, even though there is no frontline. He does not have Rise Instant Stay. He does not have the Twisted Advance. There is damage in the lanes, but not reliable CC, so he managed to do it in the LPL Grand Final with the Reverse Sweep. His experience came in at Trump in front of his home, cra home crowd in Wuhan. He needs to do it again. But you've got to be so careful, Papa Smith, that you end up going with a warrior on this Rek'Sai. All of a sudden, you have five members on your team that make a delicious Cho'Gath burger, and he is going to just go to town with those feet. You can build a Cinder Hulk and a Wall Monks. You've got no frontline energy. Sorry to say, <laughs> Rek'Sai can only do so much. This is definitely a game of timers for Edward Game. You can hear the crowd roar. They are ready to go. They want to see an EDG win here. You can see the signs. You can hear the cheers. This is the game where EDG could tie up their score, but SKT is going to be a real hard opponent. Loaded onto the rift now for the final game of the day. EDG and SKT, we said it at the start, the two titans of their own regions going head to head. Again, the most famous matchup between these two, of course, MSI 2015, but now it's Worlds 2017. Let's see what they can do. And I want to talk very quickly about the Rumble and the Lucian, the, the very last rotation here for EDG in the draft. I think they actually said, you know, step away from what is the ideal composition and say what are the best comfort picks available. Mouse's Rumble is actually very, very good, and he's able to have a lot of impact in mid-game teamfights with it. And as we said in champs, like Scout's Lucian, it is one of the go-to blind picks for him. So they sim simply said, we could go Gnar here and just a normal AP mage in mid and actually have a better comp in my opinion but they're like nope go for comfort that's how we beat skt and you need to give comfort to scout because again he's against faker faker was interviewed before he came to world and said is there any special preparations for facing against an old teammate he said no it's going to be another game you saw him in the previous match there is still a single no he does say that losing to an ex skt member would bring him down wasn't going to be brought down by impact yesterday it's on scout and he's starting cull against faker which already feels like a confidence play that is pretty audacious and remember like we saw with cloud nine versus skt you try to do anything tricky against Faker, you're likely to have it turned around on you. The man is considered the best for a reason, so keep your eyes on him as this game goes on to see exactly what he can get done in that mid lane as we've got pretty standard starts coming out in the jungle and pretty much everywhere. Yeah, we also see that call pretty often in the LPL, uh, even from Scout as well. I don't even think it's too risky specifically. Yeah, you lose a bit of base HP compared to like a Doran's Blade, but the sustain is nice and the damage is there. Scout with some nice early trades against Faker. You mentioned how Faker has struggled historically in this matchup. Well, maybe he hasn't quite learned all the ins and outs of it just yet, or maybe he's setting me up to be wrong yet again. We'll have to see. We are only at level two. And sometimes we have to be specific <laughs> with Faker. Big there, calls. There yeah. is a history. Big predictions. <laughs> there is a history where he struggled in the matchup. He has been able to circumvent it subsequently, but it was against a Chinese team at an international event, so it goes right to the front of your memory. And it's cool to see Scout, even with all the intangibles, playing aggressive like you should in the matchup against Ori. And again, we're also looking at Clear Love. He needs to be active early on. He needs to be successful. He wants to press gank. Let's see if they can find it. Flashing to the knockup. One to Faker is going to be taken low. Scout still looking to find the damage. One more attack might be able to do it. First blood for EDG. What a start. Scout in the mid lane with Clear Love getting a kill on to Faker. This is exactly what EDG needed in order to snowball this game. And the crowd are going wild. They knew what to expect, but we know that Faker will always step forward. He will not be denied. That time, it was to his demise. Everything was shaking in here just for a moment. As soon as they got that kill, let's see the replay. It's a nice gank from Clear Love, and then after the flash from Faker, he just follows, and then we just see Clear Love step out of tower aggro. Scout knowing he can take one more tower shot. And Cannon Minion almost did him dirty there, but he was able to live <laughs> through all of it. Very nice confidence play. Gia able to do it against SKT mere months ago. Now it's on scout. And this is what we mentioned in the intro. A team like EDG, they can get an early advantage. They can get some of these kills early on, and they need them so, so badly because we know the SKT late game with the draft and with the players is amazing. So you do not want to go there if you're EDG. 
almost feels like the Janna is wool over your eyes, because otherwise, no Relic Shield on their side. We see it engage. Nice trading coming out from the EDG bottom lane. Bang gonna be losing about half of his health there. The Blade Caller finding the root to allow that little bit of extra damage from the auto attacks on the end of things is now Peanut looking around this mid lane. Definitely be three pushing lanes for EDG and only Peanut to punish them. Counter ganks would spell his demise. No flash up for Clear Love, we should mention. Both flashes used right. to secure that kill. So we're watching Peanut looking to come from behind. He has not been spotted yet. And there have been no camp on the bottom side, so EDG probably does not expect Peanut to actually fade there. They're gonna get surprised now. Highboy gonna be the one who's jumped on. Wolf starting the fight off. Peanut wants to come in here with the flag and drag if he can. Root comes out on the bang. Highboy still looking to get out, but not quite yet. Barrier is down, but he still walks away and survives with his life. And that's why barrier heal has become so common in what is usually very defensive bot lanes. It's not even single digit HP. He lives with over 250. Barrier and heal is a massive injection, and SKT even waiting for the engage wasn't enough. See around mid lane, Clear Love is here again. It is Operation Feed Scout. Shut down a Faker all in one fell swoop, waiting for his moment. Faker has enough mana to still respond to this. Close Scout. to full HP, no summoners. Scout is trying to force him, corral him into being closer to that Raptor brush. Raptor camp, I should say. There it is. Clear Love comes up the wall. Knockup comes down. More damage goes through. They don't quite have enough to finish it this time, but they will force Faker away. Exactly. They force Faker back. That means Scout can get level 6 in lane now and push in this wave. Faker will return only level 5 and lose some more minions. He's already down 15 CS this early on in the game. We're only 6 minutes into it. So once again, it is the perfect start for Scout in the mid lane. Stats comparison coming up on your screen right now between these two. Scout, 5.2 KDA compared to Faker's 3.6 kill KDA participation. Wise. First place in kill participation from Scout. And KDA wise certainly is night and day for the side of Scout. Kill participation is a little bit misleading. A lot of team fighting in the LPL That's true. goes to the That's late true. game. Whereas Faker, we all know it. Sometimes he just goes top lane, hoovers up minion wave, is more of a 1-3-1 one, one threat. So that part is misleading, but it hasn't been a statistically outstanding season for Faker. Really, the excitement for Faker, apart from his legacy, was how he ended the season, pushing through the other best mid lanes in Korea to eventually be stopped by BDD in the final. And EDG, one thing I'm excited about for this team right now, after they had initially found that first blood, this team was up 800 gold. Now later, they're up over 1,000 gold. That lead has been passively growing larger and larger because of the advantages they're just accruing in these lanes on their own. These guys are playing the early game well. Now iBoy and Mako pushing up the bottom lane yet again, keeping their opponents underneath the turret. Almost every time we pan down here, we're seeing Bang and Wolf just stuck farming up underneath their own structure. And Bang is just delaying all his damage in this game here with the Relic Shield. Now Ninja Tabby coming in as his first item. Looking at, of course, Zaya, Rek'Sai, Lucian all going to his lane and fighting him, so it is an item that will give him a lot of value in terms of the stats, but again, delays his own damage. Call for the Zaya as well, means he'll be able to farm up plenty, recognizing the fact that this lane's going pretty slowly. Clear Love trying to steal away that enemy blue buff from Peanut. 7-1 record for Clear Love as Rek'Sai in summer for the LPL. Now stealing this away, giving it over to Scout. Exactly what they need. And it was fun because when Clear Love, you know, rejoined EDG here and started really finding success with these guys in the summer split once again, Rek'Sai was one of the champions he used very early on when almost no one else around the world was actually playing Rek'Sai. But it's such a signature pick for him because he's not the kind of jungler who wants the big flashy mechanical plays. He needs some consistency, some steady champions. And Rek'Sai, it is so consistent what you can do with these games. TP coming in from Mouse. EDG wants to make the play on the SKT bottom lane. Heal gonna be used. Wolf escaping for now. EDG commits a lot to this. They've got five men bottom lane, but they can't find any kills. Summoner spells expended by the SKT support. Gets him out safely. They want to sit the landing and actually take the turret here. Otherwise, it's gonna be obviously a big misfire for them. We should have communicated to Mouse. There was no summon. There was summoners up, sorry the side of SKT, so not able to push them down. And Wolf and Bang feel confident enough to return. The turret is close, but it's not down yet. Ivoy gonna return some fire now onto Bang and Wolf. Gets the blade collar, but only with a single blade. A scout going in onto Faker, gonna be shockwave, but the culling still comes out. The heal's gonna be popped. Faker trying to get himself away from this and does do so. Scout 
not afraid to play aggressive at all now. He knows he's going to win that 1v1, and it's a position he's often in in the OPL where he can play so aggressive in the lane. Scout is the kind of player who loves to invade into the enemy jungle and find someone to just skirmish him. He often doesn't really care about the vision or where the enemy team might be. If he can find one guy to duel, he's going for yeah, it. Yeah, first thought, his first thought is to fight. And in a game like this, where that needs to be their game plan, they need to keep snowballing. It's not the worst sort of weapon to have on your team. They love, like you say, with the reliable ganker and plenty of follow-up damage from Scout to follow that. Clear love passing around bot side. The earlier they can take this turret, the quicker they can start rotating and playing around a Rumble's earlier power spikes. But Hooney and all this madness has farmed up. Exactly. And Jogath, we know, will be the monster in the late game. And it's not the same for Rumble. After things like the locket was used all the time, Redemption came into the game as well. And, and people started getting a lot of access to very easy shields. Things like Rumble had a harder time being super valuable in the late game because when you lay down that big ulti which is your main thing you're bringing to the team and you just see a redemption and a locket coming in saying well that damage right. is kind of gone trouble lose a bit of value there scout going in yet again on to faker this time not having the best of trades only pretty much breaking even but a nice shield from mako to help make sure he's fine against the retaliatory damage there. It's actually really big for SKT to be able to steal away the blue buff to balance what EDG was able to do stealing their blue. Notice that Baker went for a respectful Seeker's arm guard first. His mana costs were going to be an issue. So just picking up the blue allows him to just passively wave clear and not actually lose turret HP if he was denied that pickup. Clear love looking around here again, seeing if maybe there's any opportunities for anything. He does have the Cinder Hulk completed. I want to go ahead and bring that up because we were talking about the jungle item differences earlier. He is going to be that main tank for the team. He knows it, and he's got to get as tanky as he can. And I think he should focus on what it brings him early and lets him turret dive with the HP. It's much more about what he can do in terms of how aggressive he can gank rather than what he can do in the late game with the Cinder Hulk. Hi, boy. EDG taking down that first turret there in the bottom lane. Scout looking for Faker yet again. Popping the village water. Cutlass flashing away from the shockwave. Might still be looking to find some more here. The culling coming out as Peanut now going to be taking the brunt of it. The ulti, but the charm and the counterattack is down. Clear Love's forced to flash away, and EDG will not find success this time. Fancy moves right there from Scout. And I got to say, I'm not a fan of Faker even taking that fight in the first place. He's going with this build that's very, very slow. And he actually just baited in his own jungler and support to come and help him. If you're Faker, you just want to wave clear. Never try and 1v1 the Lucian this early in the game. I mean, he had first roam from his support, so I think he just saw blood in his eyes that time. It was never going to be there. Like you say, the items weren't there to complement it, but we saw it, Eyeboy and Mako sticking together. Wolf made the first roam. Spared any blushes, but still, the CS lead exists for the scout. And now EDG got to make a decision here. Do they want to go top and try and get another tower, or do they want to go bot lane, push out the lane, and secure Mountain Drake? It looks to be the call for more turrets. Simply saying we need the outer turrets gone, we need more gold, so Scout can become a split pusher. And the immediate gold is really what I take away from your point there. Rumble wants to get the first item, wants to get his power spikes going with the Leandries. The Mountain Drake really represents a later game win condition they're not looking for at all. So making this rotation compared to, say, Reckless, for example, returning to bot lane, is just different priorities for the side of EDG. And I really like going for the tower. Sure. Because again, Mountain Drake, while it is nice for you when you're going to kill objectives later, you need gold because you want to be an item ahead of SKT. So when they're trying to fight back, when Baron spawns, you just win that fight straight up by being so far ahead. 1300 gold is the tune to how Faker's down in the mid lane, so at least that's working out. But you can see the counterpoint is that Trogath has largely been unheralded. And now the SKT rotation to respond to EDGs, putting the bottom laners into the top side now that that first turret has fallen. But Ivoy and Mako don't seem to be halting any sort of the aggro that we've seen earlier. Ardent sensors both up and running now for these supports. As mid lane, they call down the equalizer on to Faker. The burst is there. Who cares about the shockwave? Another kill on to SKT's mid laner. Scout going to be taken low, but not down just yet. The Cullen comes out. Peanut is forced back as Hooney has to run away as well. Into the back line goes Clear Love. Peanut is down. Hooney now barely going to be kept alive. Styler Scout goes the down again. They're getting so far ahead now around this mid lane. Vega went down early. Hooney was not in range to feast the Lucian. And then suddenly, the rest of EDG just tower dive. They're not going to stop 
they're gonna keep pushing. Twitch stayed in the top lane. Everyone from EDG were gonna commit to the turret dive. Faker did not have flash. The Feast was not even able to get a trade kill for Hooney. And the mid lane is in complete shatters for SKT. This is not what people were expecting from this game. You never head into an SKT game expecting Faker to be the one who is constantly collapsed and just taken down. We commented on how Cloud9 tried this and failed. EDG is doing it with spectacular results, but now they've got to be worried about their own top here. laner as the reinforcements arrive. Faker keeping himself alive with that shockwave. Now it's going to be taken very low, but Hooney is rooted up, locked down, and pushes a one-way ticket back to the spawn platform. Hooney just got denied again. He's so close to being able to feast someone for the kill, but then the CZ comes in. I love this play here. No flash on Faker. Instantly Mouse committing everything to take him down. And now Huni gets enough damage to actually kill the Lucian, but at the very end, the knockoff from Clearlock prevents the Feast from the Jogas, and now we get the Tower Dive. And the Tower Dive here, we talked about what can you do when you have a Rex site this early with Cinderhawk. Dive turrets are plenty. Wolf tried to spare the blushes. Twitch was never going to get there. EDG, you said in the draft official, I don't like it. And based on what we saw yesterday, you were vindicated. Everyone was right there. All the armchairs were there, right there with you saying, don't like it either. That's not the EDG I saw. They can't close from the early to mid game. They haven't closed yet, but their understanding of how aggressive they needed to play is really heartening to see. They've done everything right here in the early game. And I just want to give so much credit also to Clear Love. The man who's been criticized so often for his performance on the international stage, one of the best players of all time, if not the best player of all time in the LPL, is now showing up here in the early game on this Rex. I've been involved in almost every single kill. It's been around the mid lane. The scout was picking up basically all the gold, and that is perfect for EDG. And Clear Love playing here in his hometown of Wuhan. The man is from this place. That's part of the reason why the crowd is so insane for EDG. He is doing them a wonderful service right now, having an awesome game on this Rex side. The 1-0 and 3, part of all but one of the kills. The only man doing better than him is, of course, Scout with full kill participation on this Lucian. So let's take a deep breath. EDG, massive driver's seat in this particular game. But what do they need to do next is the question. And honestly, pushing Vision into both the top and bot side, the blue and red side, of SKT is what we need to see EDG doing. Too often in the LPL, you can see them make aggressive plays when they feel like they're ahead. Certainly ahead, 5,000 gold. But that gold lead could start to get smaller. It gets less relevant as the game goes on. So continuing the snowball with smart vision is what I want to see from EDG. And it's interesting they're actually keeping Scout in the mid lane for now. He's far away the strongest member on the team. And normally you want to put him in the side lane. But they're saying we can take the tower with just a Zaya and then secure Rift Health. Once the outer turrets are gone, then Scout can split push. Let's see what happens. Bang trying to start the fight out onto Scout here. Nice flash over the wall, staying alive, avoiding the recombo. As now that he's safe, EDG feels comfortable putting effort into this top lane tier one turret, continuing to take the Rift Herald. Things are going their way. And they're trading up beautifully here. They had the equalizer in bot lane. That's why Mouse stuck around. Level 11, two points in the equalizer. Clears out the minion wave, delays the timer by which SKT can crack their second turn of the game. Meanwhile, Lazy 4 and a Rift Herald already obtained by EDG. SKT stealing away the enemy red buff. They'll take down their second turret of the game. And now Mouth gonna be the one caught out, returning a lot of damage on the peanut, forced to flash out of that cataclysm to stay safe. SKT does get that objective. It takes Faker a little while, but at least he gets it, gets that local gold, gets himself a little bit more caught up. He's got a ways to go. And the reason we pointed out much earlier that SKT is the kind of team that where you can get these early leads to get out here. Oh, actually. Bang, finding himself getting culled pretty quickly. Scout's not going to chase that one any further. But basically, SKT during the summer split, and even also before the summer split, we saw this at MSI as well. Like, they have these games where they're drafting very defensively, and they are falling behind early on. Especially a man like Faker can be a target for a lot of ganks, but also in the bottom lane, we've seen Bang struggle against some of those you know, junglers early on. SKT have been in this situation multiple times, and in the LCK here in the summer split, where it's been a little bit more shaky, I feel like they've lost more of those games than we normally 
see from them. I think that's a correct read. What was working for them at MSI is that even when other lanes were on fire and Faker himself fell behind at MSI, Huni was actually having massive performance. You'll remember, he was taking the, all the gold between 15 and 30 minutes, picking up all the CS being a powered Galio, I guess was the meta back at MSI. But what's happened since then is Huni hasn't played that much in summer. They've gone for Untara much more of a role player. And here we find a game where Huni has a lot of gold. He's been shot down a couple of times, but he's really the benefactor of a slow early game. And they just haven't been playing that style and they look less comfortable doing it. And now we also gotta see VDG after taking down the outer turrets can use this advantage to get that full vision control you mentioned earlier, Papa Smithy. It's always about pushing lanes first, then invading the jungle. Get down the vision, deny the enemy vision, and look for picks, look for these fights. You really want to get this Lucian in the face of SKT. Let's see if EDG can steal away this blue buff. For now, that's the concern. Looks like they won't get it just yet. Smite comes out, but it's not low enough. Good patience there on the spear from Pina. Means he can grab that for himself, but it is denied from Faker. Just contesting this keeps it off the mid laner. Another Mountain Drake spawning as well in a few minutes. So EDG will have a lot of tools to rushing down a Baron, which is a good thing for EDG because yesterday they spent so much time setting up control wards and then never starting the Baron itself. Never feel like they could just take it down fast enough and it bought so much time for AHQ. This game with a Fed Lucian, with double Mountain Drake potentially coming for them, then you can start that Baron and take it down very quickly. And you talked about this same principle last game, Deficio, when we saw Cloud9 take the early Baron. How useful it is for these teams that want to win quickly to be able to secure that and snowball that lead and take enough control of the map that their opponents don't feel safe or comfortable going for that skate. And an interesting stat, actually, in summer season, it hasn't been the big comebacks for SKT. At 20 minutes, the biggest gold lead they've ever turned is 4.5k. We're looking at a game where that's already been eclipsed. So SKT need to find new favorite, need to show they've worked on reintegrating Huni in the six weeks or so since the LCK final, because that has not really been their recent experience, even though they've lost a lot of games. Exactly. If you look at that draft right there, two big tanks in the front with Chogaf and Java, and they won't just die instantly to the AD carries of EDG. You then have two carries that actually have the ability to reach the back line. You got the ball being moved in and the shockwave from Faker. You got, of course, the ulti from Bang. Scout is getting caught out. Scout yeah, in some trouble here. Might have a difficult time getting himself away. Has to try to escape the Cataclysm. Some fancy feet to get out of that one. Make sure he dashes over the wall. Now Peanut, the one in trouble, can't quite flash over. Nearly getting himself killed. Equalizer comes down and takes him out. Mouth grabbing the kill. And they're just trying to make engage where they don't have the damage. It's not a warrior watch charm, but it's much squishier. And there could be more. Now it's not afraid. They try to go back in. Clear up looking to grab the LC, but a dive boy who's got the damage. Faker drops again. And Clear Love takes him down. They keep finding team fights and they keep taking out SKT's 8-0 in kills. But it's even more than that to Fisher. They're being gifted team fights. They're being seen SKT think they've got the chance, thinks they've got the moment to slow down the game. That moment is still not there for SKT. Yeah, that was the most classic scout face check we see so often where he suddenly gets surprised, but because he's so far ahead, he was actually able to just tank it up. And now the Baron is being started with the Ardent Center on the Jana, with the full team attack speed. That's the objective they need. And that is exactly what they need, as you just said right there. I don't know why I repeated that point, but I agree. It is <laughs> what they it's need. A important point, damn it's it. It's really important. Scout stuff facing. <laughs> and we're seeing the replay here. They just didn't have the damage. Faker wasn't around to use the shockwave. That was the burst they needed to close the fight. And Peanut flashes for distance. Very nice equalizer. Burnt to a crisp, sitting on that. More and more kills. And you would think, as a Korean analyst, I would watch this and feel bad for SKT. But they drafted scaling in a similar fashion to how AHQ did in the previous game. And what did I say to Fisher? I said, the right way to play the game is to take the risk, is to push for the vision, is to play decisive. And EDG are playing with decisiveness that we did not see yesterday. And it's OK, Papa. You're here with friends. You can cry. Let it all out. We've got Give you, me buddy. two shoulders. This I got him. I got him. This is the I'm support right. group right here. <laughs> Got we, got him, pal. That EDG. We, got, we got you, and EDG got second Mountain Drake. Going to continue to provide them with extra objective control and pushing power. Now that they've got two under their belt and the third one spawning next, if they can retain control over the game the same way they have, they are on a wonderful path to being able to find the win and seal the deal here. And then you look at the side of SKT, they really don't have anything. They've still got 
a time to get to three, four items if you get to 40 minutes, but doesn't look like 40 minutes is coming. EDG wants to break the base with the first Baron Mug. And Scout so far forward on that front line. He knows how strong he is. He's got his flash. He's got his dash. He learned his lesson yesterday about that choke at you. <laughs> he's not going to be caught out again. And you know how much this one means. He's got 100% kill, but space the game played through his lane against the player he could never unsee on SK Telecom. EDG still looking to break this base open, not bothering with a one four split. They've got five men strong. They drop down the equalizer. They drop Baker's house. They're about to take him down as soon as that Zonian fades away. Eyeboy grabs the kill. Mako taken incredibly low. The poison's still ticking, but it's not going to do enough. And inhibitor number one falls 24 minutes in. And these two comfort picks coming in from EDG in the last rotation have been so valuable for them with Lucian, with the rumble. They said we need Scout on the Lucian mid, so we need AP top. Mouse is fantastic on the champion itself, and it actually allows them to run this snowball comp here, also due to, of course, clear off Rex side. I mean, this sort of early to mid game comp is not what we've seen win in this tournament. We've seen the games drag out, but EDG are with renewed vigor today. All teams to clear off the minion wave. I thought, okay, just gonna get the inhibitor. They want it more. Exactly, and as soon as they get the one, Remember, they can just take down the tower. And I just want to add on to the point you just made. We have not seen the snowball comps win a lot, especially not against Korean teams. We have seen multiple teams actually try it already here, day one and day two. But SKT right now, they're looking in such a tough spot that it seems almost impossible for them to come back. They're down over 9,000 gold, 25 minutes into the game. You can see the amount of blue side wards down on the SKT side of the map, showing how far forward EDG want to play and want to push. They've got everyone hanging around this top side. They want the top lane tier two. SKT will look to defend it, but it's gonna be hard. Ulti traded back and forth there. Shockwave for that Zaya ult. But now can EDG force the push any further? Scout's gonna have to dash backwards after getting caught out by the rupture. SKT hold the line for now. I think SKT lose the perfect team, but they don't even have Infinity Edge on the Twitch yet. When they make their last stand, the items are not there. And it just feels like we're waiting for minions, waiting for cooldowns on the side of EDG. Because SKT, the cupboard's bare. Such a difficult situation for the LCK representatives to be in. We talked about how these two teams were titans from their region, how there's a history between them. And right now, EDG is looking to add one hell of a page to that history book. SKT still with zero kills to their name. They lose their sixth turret. And it's EDG knocking on the top lane door. What a turnaround for EDG here. What a confidence booster as well. You lose to AHQ in that last team fight yesterday. A team you played against so many times and know so well. And then, of course, you face your old rivals in SKT again. And you actually win it. You know what the best thing is, Deficio? Do some quick math. If we do see EDG win this game, every team in this group is one and one, and we are no closer to knowing who will get out. Everyone looks at SKT, ha gets the mind back to all their worlds when all their LCK wins, and fills in the first spot. SKT were not undefeatable in summer season. Sure, they picked it up at the end, but they had that big phase where they couldn't work out a patch and just fell again and again and again. You can cast your eyes and see some important items finally inch towards Infinity Edge. Even the execution is calling to deny something like the Redemption and also the Janna Monsoon is there. But it's still a def deficit to the tune of 9.6k gold. And SKT team fighting out of this would be another story, another development, but it's damn hard. And SKT just don't have the gold to get things like Redemption and Locker just yet. So this Rumble is really, really effective when he's landing the Equalizer in the back line. Very little magic resistance or shielding to really save Baker or Bang. EDG continues the push. They've got one turret left standing outside of the SKT base. They're looking to take it down now. Scout backing himself up as he does get silenced. Shield onto him as he is playing the role of the front line this game. Both Baron and Third Mountain Drake will be live in slightly over a minute. And when you're missing that clear front line, what you need to do is be able to run aggressively towards the enemy team. And that's where the Rumble can come down behind the tower and then set up the rest of EDG with clear love chasing at his For me, when I start to think of how could EDG lose the fight, it's not keeping tabs on Twitch and turret diving being surprised by his damage. If they see Twitch, they'll know everything they need to potentially take down SKT. Waiting on that last big engage. They win a fight here. The game is completely over.
Culling comes out. Look at the base of SKT. It's being absolutely ravaged by these super minions. Nexus turret number one almost already down. EDG continuing the pressure here in the bottom lane. Scout says, I don't care about the minions. I just want to put damage into this thing. They see Ariana. They don't need to play as respectful. They have control wards if they wanted. Rek'Sai around the left. It's around the right, though. That's going to be a tower. It's time to pull the trigger. They do so. They grab the turret. Now they can move back to the Mountain Drake. Then they can set up for Baron Vision. The path is clear for EDG. They'll take down the Scuttle Crab in these last remaining moments, waiting for that Drake. They're getting a third Mountain Drake. They already got the first Baron. That was huge for them to actually get a bigger goal lead. They're saving the Drake now. They got two already. Bang is hiding. He's coming. Bang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. They're right through. Oh, oh my god. Thunder Shockwave will find them all. And SKT with a hell of a response will take down four. They did it. They fall back from a 9,000 gold deficit and won a team fight against all expectations. Rumble could not get the perfect equalizer because in half a second, everyone's health bar exploded. One mistake, and a team like SKT will punish you and they will take it all. I have talked to multiple casters and analysts so far during Worlds leading up to Worlds talking about SKT as a team, and when you watch SKT and they're down 10,000 gold, you can never count now, them out. Now, consider EDG have no vision on the red side. Where is Twitch is what they should be asking. When they see Ori, they can probably guess, but this Wombo's out of this world. It all starts with that engage from Wolf on the Rakan, and Pinky picked up very late in the summer's play, but had some very impactful performances on in the playoffs, using it here to start the fight, set up the Shockwave, from Fega and of course, easy damage for Bang as well. And that's now a Baron to SKT. From 11,000 gold to 4,000 gold, SKT bounces back. And right now, EDG wish they'd just taken that third Drake, recalled, gone back to base, reset the entire map. But sadly for them, they walked into the mid lane and SKT were ready. And now we've got that point where you've got to worry about the composition difference because SKT has that scaling comp. They've got that big front line. I mean, you just put your eyes into the items on the right side of your screen. Death cap out of nowhere. Second zeal item completed for Bang, who was smarting, what, five minutes ago without even an infinity edge. That's turned into two zeal items. And these are the item points. This is the time of post 30 minutes where some of those prophecies from Pick and Ban suddenly look eerily surprising. But man, the way it got here, the turn it exactly. took, was basically a horror film for any LPL fan. I mean, it's been a fantastic game to watch so far here. And the fact that SKT are now hitting the late game, meaning they have the stronger comp, is fantastic for them. They're hiding in this little brush here. Seeing if they can find the pick on the Huni who pops the Righteous Glory, but there's no way out of that. Bang shows his face, but not really in a good Equalizer. Spot. Equalizer comes down. Both Redemption's gonna be overlaid like a Venn diagram. Not a lot coming out from either one of those. Pina now gonna be the target. SKT may be in a tough spot. Scout looking for more. Has to be very respectful of what Faker can do. I like the play there from EDG. Hide in the brush here to get a kill to try and stop the Baron Buff team from pushing. Bang still got ulti, 25 seconds on Huni with TP ready. You see the pauses they have to take. Now suddenly, you can't face check the death cap Oriana. Suddenly, you are respecting the Twitch. So Relentless Aggression could have happened after a single pick before that fight. Now, respect is required. And you mentioned some of the offensive items before here, Papa Smithy, like death cap. I just want to go back to the locket and the redemption. They were not there before when EDG were snowballing. They are here now. So SKT are able to stop this rumble from having the same impact in team fights, and no one is really dropping low when EDG is starting fights anymore. And that's kind of the scary thing is lockup plus redemption equals a sad rumble. Unfortunately, even adding on items, that is just a natural counter that was added into the game a couple of months ago. So SKT maybe need to stay grouped. Maybe they can't rely on who and not have all those isolated deaths, but they are in with a fighting chance. And you also got to feel a little bit sorry for EDG and the triple mountain Drake because the value of these have now basically disappeared when yeah. it comes to winning late game fights. You've already gotten most of the objectives you needed. That second Baron response was supposed to be where EDG cashed in on having multiple mountain Drakes just rushing it down. But then they lost that fight. They're not getting any scaling from it either. So it's all in favor of SKT at the moment. How quickly the tides can turn. All it takes is one incredible team fight from one incredible team with one incredible shockwave. 
and now they are in full control, pushing up into the base of EDG, wanting to claim some inhibitor turrets of their own. They've got Mooney in the top lane, everyone else here bottom side, seeing what they can accomplish. Baron will be active for another 45 seconds as EDG has just seen a complete change in attitude from Scout being on the front line, constantly flexing those muscles, shooting whenever he has a chance, to now having to play back behind that I mean, turret. Comp can't deal with the 4-1. Chogath and Rumble. Chogath laughs in the face of Rumble. At this point in the game, he's gonna take a free out of charge. The biggest factor, Love wants to make a play on the floor. Here Love goes in, looks to find the flash into the knockout, but now it's gonna be Scout who's in some danger. There comes your finish. Right down. Down. him off the righteous glory pops booty's gonna get himself away but the joe is slow and scout's looking to run him down he's still chasing hooney's just trying to buy time here he wants people to respawn when he's gonna die very soon hooney will go down the flash from medco to get out of the edg marching up the mid lane they've got 25 seconds on bang and peanut they right. just need to kill one in him and then straight towards the next turrets it's just Oriana for 15 seconds. They'll get the respawns. Wolf will be there in five, but EDG are five men strong, and they feel like they can finish it here. Taker needs to try and kill the minion. Shockwave is ready in just a few more seconds. Wolf and, and Bang are up. There. Wolf and Bang are up. EDG decides to not go for this. They know that they could go so wrong so quickly, they back away. Great engage though in the bottom lane. They knew Huni was in the top lane. He could not join the fight in time. And while everyone was looking at Faker because he was the one clear up jumped onto, Bang actually with flash available ended up getting caught. Consider also that when Chogath is not there, you can't really set the tempo of a fight. You can't know where to put the ball because the fight moves so quickly. The shockwave is almost an afterthought. Bang caught in the front. He actually got hit by the blade fall. Exactly. It was all an eye boy right there. The entire front line of SKT were gone because Peanut was actually sitting in the jungle, just kind of looking for potentially a flank onto EDG. And we get to see Huni just die in the very end. Mako using the flash for that one. My favorite thing is we're being spoiled. This is not supposed to be a game of inches. EDG no. were running them over. We thought it would just be academic. SKT only have four kills on the board. I've not won a team fight, barring the explosive one in mid lane. But suddenly, it's all up for grabs. A gold lead for EDG. So many advantages for EDG. They've done everything but punch their ticket to a single game win in this group. And yet, everyone is sitting here wondering, because we've all had PTSD about SKT coming back. This team is so good at playing from behind. And you mentioned just a few moments ago to Fischio about the status of the Mountain Drakes and how those are not the most useful, but they will provide Elder Dragon stacks. Stout gonna be caught out. They get both the AD carry. Stout jumping himself away, but Wolf is down. EDG's found one. Clear Love gonna be going into ulti mode to keep himself oh, safe. Bang. But bang goes bang, bang, bang. Rat attack, attack, finds himself too. Now they're looking to finish off the rest. Going. Scout drops, Boy stands alone. Man, I boy, if you had more of a front line, you can see the blinking health members. Bang chose his moment, popped out, and the squishy members of EDG were taken down. So often, it is scout starting fights this time. Once again, face checking, but I know I was guilty of seeing the start and thinking, oh, maybe yeah. this one, they would win. We all saw it right there, equalizing the choke point, both dying early, but that's where the problem with all these squishy members comes in for EDG, because Bang's ulti will always go through almost all of them and deal so much damage. Now, yesterday we saw it twice. Scout is caught on Lucian. Game ends. He's caught here. He gets equalized. But remember, he gets, sorry, he gets shockwave, but doesn't matter. Equalizer comes in, but Bang is not there yet. He's not using his ult yet. He pops his ult and silence into three shots. And goodbye. 80% HP for three members. Very well done by the SKT 80 carry. And now with Scout only just respawning. SKT goes to the Baron pit. They look to claim the objective. EDG has no way to contest. This is a double super buff SKT team. And once again, you have one of these games where you just feel like EDG should be able to win because they were so far ahead. But on the other side, you have these legendary players who's been in this situation for years, like Bang, like Faker, and they're able to come up big in the 
very, very important moment. And the part I love about Worlds is Deficio. It feels like it's a final here. It feels like this is the culmination of something. It's only the culmination of day two of the group stage. <laughs> the crowd going mental every time EDG picks up a kill. SKT trying to steady the ship. It's steady to the tune of 100 gold, but we have to remember where we were in pick and ban. 100 gold at 38 minutes means that SKT's team comp is ripe for success. And you talk about the crowd going mental and the feeling of this whole game, but the arena is silent right now. The crowd is on a knife's edge waiting for the outcome of this game. Everyone knows that the next fight could easily determine which Nexus stays and which one explodes. It's on the individual talent of EDG to win the next fight. They will not have anything going in their favor other than just purely the mechanics and how they're using these specific champions here. We gotta get the perfect equalizer from Mouse. We need Clearloff to get a good knock up on the back line of SKT. Scout and iBoy have had good team fights. They need to find another one to win here. They're against the Baron buff and the Elder Drake of SKT and the late game comp. Once again, Huni not grouped. Costa working on their side lanes here. SKT wanting to take down the last of the turrets, shy of the inhibitor turrets. It goes down, their first gold lead in a while. Inconsequential, like we mentioned, though. Not in any way getting the maximum value out of these buffs, it should be noted. Elder will be falling soon to stay themselves up. And, uh, well, at least we can rejoice, because uh, when we don't see the base being broken, we're going to get at least one more 5v5. Any single fight, any single pick could be this game. Gentlemen, red inhibitor respawning mid lane. As Bang opens up on the top lane inhibitor of EDG. Scout, clear love, these guys that did so much in the first part of the game now find themselves in the back foot yet again. All 10 summoner spells up on the side of EDG. Not the same story being told for SKT, but they've still got the majority of them. It's like you said, Deficio, it all comes down to who plays it better. Gold doesn't mean anything. Everything before this point is just moot. It's equal ground. It's who's going to win. And Clear Love wants to go in. He's going to be silenced, forced back a little bit now. Peanut soaking some damage of his own. Wolf jumping to his aid. The inhibitor turret continuing to tank damage. The knockup coming out again onto Clear Love. Mouse not finding the opportunity to lay down the oh, damage. Scout. As Scout goes over the wall, finds a couple more shots into Huni. SKT now retreating after grabbing the turret. If Huni hadn't fallen low, they would want to stay here longer. Massive group minion wave pushing in bot lane. They prepped many, many moons ago. Huni will, with the war marks though, be able to, out of combat, get that health up. Bang, of course, does not want to ult to try to take down the inhibitor. It's still going to be a bit of a seesaw, but look at that minion wave in bot. Scout getting himself away from the rupture. The minion wave bottom is going to be an issue here soon. EDG holding on for now, but who will they send to deal with that minion wave, if anyone at all? Inhibitor taken very low. Bang, still invisible, now shows himself. That means EDG knows exactly where everyone is, but it doesn't look like they're going to be going to the fight just yet. Culling comes out, but to no real effect. Baker going forward, wanting to find that shockwave. Instead, gets the ult for ult trade. SKT will start to move towards mid lane. That will relieve pressure. Humble will be able to clear out the minions in bot side. But they do lose their inhibitor. It was unfortunately a seesaw where there was only losing options for EDG outside of a miracle outplay on one side or the other. Again, we get one of those most or maybe not. Oh, clear love could be in some real danger. Has to flash away from the cataclysm of Peanut. SKT now looking to run these guys down. Can't quite do it. Clear love's got the tunnel. And that one was very big for SKT because the main engage of EDG is Equalizer and then clear love flashing in, knocking up someone in SKT's back line. That is now gone. And just to be clear, that basically means they don't have initiation. That is yes. about as situational as can be. The moment you're laying down the equalizer to slow people, you are losing massive value out of it. The early game plan where they were forcing SKT on their turn, initiation didn't matter. Now, where the game has become line ball, those few tiny mistakes they made, that one team fight in mid lane, and the team comp really doesn't have the answer. And that's what we said in Champion Select, that EDG had some fatal mistakes on day one, and every one of those windows that you even leave cracked open, SKT is gonna kick wide open. But let's be clear, the HQ had gaping open windows, the <laughs> gust was coming in, it was a big breeze, everyone <laughs> felt it, I put on a jumper, 
The windows here were much smaller, and yet SKT did SKT things. Exactly that. Oh, Mooney gonna take about half his HP and damage there. Gold difference over time. You've got a lovely blue mountain range that suddenly dips into a lake of blood, and that blood has been SKT's lead has been EDG's lead, excuse me, SKT's revenge as they break down inhibitor turret number two. SKT are feeling so confident moving forward, hitting the turret, knowing Lilov can't get onto them very easily. iBoys had some good moves where he actually caught out Bang with his own blade call up, and he needs to play very aggressive in the fight and exposing himself to a shockwave or maybe to Bang's damage with that ulti from the Twitch. Scout himself away from Faker, Cullen comes down, Equalizer also gonna be used, Redemption now to continue the fight, but it's Clear Love who drops first, SKT continue the charge, Clear Love taken down means there is no front line for EDG, SKT continues the push, the Feather Storm comes out but won't be finding anything, and SKT will look to end the game here, Scout barely getting himself away, now gonna be jumping around, now gonna be brought down, Faker grabs the kill in the mouth, Bang with the killing spree on the scout. Watch I boy. And no matter how bad things looked, SKT still looks to finish here. I boy alive. You've got to be mindful of the Zaya. Mako there to give him the Ardent Sensor. Look to keep him alive. I boy knocked up. Now gonna be juggled. Now taken down. SKT. Legends for a reason. Find their win. SKT are the best team to ever play League of Legends, and that man has been there for all of it. I couldn't see a way back. The stats couldn't see a way back, but one team fight initiated by Wolf, just like his famous Zyra flashing at MSI. He went in on Rakan. The Bang was able to clean it up, and from there, you see the resigned looks on EG's faces. They've had one stolen from them.